Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. This ornate marble sarcophagus serves as monument to all our fallen servicemen who remain unidentified. Three soldiers are currently interned in the tomb, but prior to 1998, there were four. The remaining unknowns will likely never be identified. But Michael Joseph Blassie is unknown no more. His identity is no longer one of history's greatest mysteries. In Arlington National Cemetery, atop a hill overlooking Washington, D.C., sits the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. The tomb, Arlington's most iconic memorial, was built to honor the unidentified fallen heroes of the United States military. The original idea for the memorial was imagined as the nation reeled in the aftermath of World War I. With thousands of American troops missing and unaccounted for, the government sought out a way to honor their service. March 4, 1921. Congress votes to approve the burial of an unidentified American casualty from World War I. The first soldier to be added to the tomb is exhumed from an unmarked battlefield grave in France and transported to the United States with great fanfare. While the unknown soldier lies in state at the Capitol Rotunda for two days, over 90,000 people visit him to pay their respects before he is moved to his final resting place, the newly built Tomb of the Unknown housed within the Memorial Amphitheater in Arlington National Cemetery. The tomb draws large crowds for years after the first unknown was buried there and quickly grows to represent the anonymous sacrifices of all American service members at home and abroad. The Sentinels of the 3rd U.S. Infantry, the Old Guard, serve as a solemn accompaniment to the tomb's inhabitants, keeping a constant, faithful watch of the memorial 365 days a year. In May of 1958, the tomb is expanded to incorporate two new unknown soldiers, one to honor those lost in World War II, and one to honor the soldiers who paid the ultimate price in the Korean War. As the soldiers are interred beside their World War I comrade, President Eisenhower awards each unknown a Medal of Honor for their sacrifice. For many years, the tomb lays undisturbed until America is once again embroiled in another military conflict overseas, this time in Vietnam. Despite the controversy surrounding the Vietnam War, President Ronald Reagan bows to public pressure and inters a Vietnam unknown to the tomb in 1984. Reagan eulogizes the unknown with a promise that the government would never stop the search for those missing in action and never cease in its efforts to grant Gold Star families closure. But the internment of the Vietnam unknown will go on to become one of the U.S. military's most controversial and long-running cases of mistaken identity. In the years following the internment of the Vietnam unknown, scientific progress opens new avenues to solving the mysteries of the soldiers designated missing in action. Military families across the country are given new hope in finding those that have been lost. The Blassies are among these families. After being told their missing son was shot down in Vietnam, they receive no further information on whether his body is ever recovered, and his final whereabouts remain a mystery to them. However, the truth turns out to be much more complicated and will go on to dominate headlines across the nation. First Lieutenant Michael Joseph Blassie graduates from the United States Air Force Academy in 1970. Blassie learns to pilot A-37s on Columbus Air Force Base in Mississippi before he is deployed to Vietnam. In just under four months in combat, Blassie flies over 130 successful missions as a member of the 8th Special Operations Squadron. On the morning of May 11, 1972, Blassie departs on his 138th and final mission. Blassie takes off from an American base in Bien Hoa in an A-37 Dragonfly and heads towards an enemy artillery outpost on the outskirts of An Lok. Blassie's mission falls on the 28th day of the Battle of An Lok. 
an extended operation that will end up taking the lives of over 10,000 U.S. soldiers. One of those soldiers is Michael Joseph Blasi. Shortly after striking his target, a burst of tracer rounds is seen approaching Blasi. His plane is hit and begins streaming fuel. No distress call is transmitted. After flying a short distance, the aircraft flips over and explodes on impact in enemy territory. Dispatched recovery teams are not able to reach the body due to what one service member describes as a murderous hail of fire from enemy forces. As a result, Blassie's body is not recovered by American troops. While this story is included in the official report on the final whereabouts of Blassie's remains, the unanswered questions surrounding his disappearance loom larger. The report on Blassie's disappearance concealed a series of unfortunate missteps that led to his critical misclassification as unknown. Nearly six months after the downing of Blassie's plane, a South Vietnamese patrol locates the crash site. After searching the site, they find the remains of his body and enough personal effects, including his ID card, to verify his identity. A contemporaneous radio log from the patrol at the time identifies him and reports the recovery. His personal effects and remains are given to the Saigon Mortuary with specific notations stating that they are believed to be Lieutenant Blassie's. From Saigon, his remains travel to a recovery camp in Thailand before making their way to the Army's Central Identification Laboratory in Hawaii. In transit, his wallet and ID are either lost or stolen. The Army Laboratory uses a controversial and inaccurate technique to analyze Blassie's remains. The method, which has since been invalidated by the scientific community, incorrectly estimates that the six bones recovered from the crash site could not belong to someone of Blassie's age and height at the time of his death. Furthermore, a test on a single hair found with a portion of his flight suit yields a different blood type than Blassie's. As a result, the chain of custody documents attached to Blassie's remains and effects are overruled and the bones are reclassified as a designated unknown. In 1984, President Reagan and Congress decide to inter a Vietnam unknown. The remains that are chosen are in fact those of Lieutenant Blassie. 10 years pass. In 1994, due to thorough research by a former Green Beret, the Blassie family is alerted to the possibility that Michael's remains have been recovered. After privately deliberating for years, the family decides to issue a public demand for a DNA test on the Vietnam unknown. A thorough internal review is commissioned by then Secretary of Defense William Cohen. The investigation unearths the inventory of items from the Saigon mortuary that were initially paired with the remnants. This compelling evidence, combined with sensational media coverage, leads Cohen to exhume the remains of the Vietnam unknown and order a DNA test. To quote Blassie's sister, Air Force veteran Colonel Patricia Blassie, he's not identified, but he isn't unidentifiable. The DNA test confirms their suspicions, and the Vietnam unknown's identity is no longer a mystery. Parts of Blassie's flight suit and safety gear are discovered in the casket and given to his family, who are finally granted closure over two decades later. In accordance with the wishes of his family, Lieutenant Blassie was reinterred in the Jefferson Barracks National Cemetery in Jefferson, Missouri. On September 17, 1998, National POW MIA Recognition Day, the Tomb of the Vietnam Unknown was rededicated to honor all missing U.S. service members from the Vietnam War. And so, the tomb remains under constant guard by an Army sentinel. The remaining unknowns will likely never be identified. But Michael Joseph Blassie is unknown no more. His identity is no longer one of history's greatest mysteries.